Hello everybody, this is Jeff, the Hawaiian Volcanic. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, in this project, uh, we're working on uh, the uh, AC um, system in my 2015 uh, Silverado, uh, 1500. I'm suspecting that there is a leak, so uh, this project I'm gonna be um, checking for uh, for a leak somewhere. Um, and if it's not a severe leak, use some uh, stop leak in there to, to seal it temporarily, and then uh, charging the, uh, the uh, AC, the Freon. So um, let's take a look and see what we've got to work with and start organicking. All right, so uh, here are some of the things you're gonna need uh, to do a diagnostic check and to uh, check for leaks and recharge your AC um, system. So we start off with, uh, with a vacuum pump. We got some refrigerant here. My, uh, my truck takes a R134 ink. Here is that uh, UV dye that I'm gonna be using to check for leaks. And then this here is that triple seal um, uh, stop leak. Um, that will temporarily seal um, leaks either in metal or in uh, uh, the rubber hoses or the uh, service ports, the O-rings. Um, so if uh, once I find the leak, then I'll know how to proceed with the repairs. So either or, I'm going to need to charge the system just to get the compressor to turn on because there's it's it's not even coming on, which means um, the uh, refrigerant level is really low. Uh, you're also going to need uh, some safety glasses. Safety um, is really important. Got some gloves back there. To ensure you're putting the right amount of free on there, you're going to need a digital um, scale and a valve tap. Um, this is uh, the tap into the uh, refrigerant can there. So, um, And last but not least, um, you're going to need a set of these uh, or a, this uh, manifold gauge here that has the uh, low side and the uh, high side um, gauges. Now, um, what most people do is when the uh, AC uh, is blowing warm, they'll just go get a can, uh, get a can of uh, this refrigerant that has the gauge already on there and just plug it in and, and fill it in with some Freon and then, um, you know, and call it a day. But getting a set of gauges like this really gives you a good idea of what's really going on with your system. So uh, we'll get more in depth with that as we uh, move along um, through the video. Just a quick disclaimer, I am not AAC certified in any way. I'm an absolute do-it-yourselfer volcanic. You know, just uh, buy, the, buy the parts and the things that you need to get the job done. So um, there are numerous other YouTube videos out there, but you know, I thought I'd do one specifically for um, my uh, Chevy Silverado. Um, a lot of the processes are the same as far as um, how to hook up um, these hoses, your gauges, and, and to check for, for vacuum and how to uh, fill the refrigerant or how to uh, put in some stop leak or dye to check for leaks. So um, another uh, a point to bring up is um, you, if you have Freon that's already in there, it is absolutely legal uh, for anyone to discharge Freon into the atmosphere. So um, with the exception of purging. So you're okay to purge, and I will, we'll get to that process a little bit later in the video. And purging is just removing the air out of the hoses to make sure that you're not pushing air into the system. And air in your AC system is bad because it, uh, it condenses and turns to water, you know, and then that will, will turn, uh, cause all kinds of problems um, down the road. So um, with that said, let's start volcanicking. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go and uh, attach um, the hoses to the low side and the high side um, port. The blue is the low side and the red is the high side port. So um, these, you have to make sure that these are backed out so that the, uh, the pin is um, retracted. Um, and these are quick connects. So you, you pull back this piece here and it snaps on. So what we're, gonna, what we're doing, the purpose of this is to check to see what the pressures are static when they start the vehicle up um, to see if there's any pressure at all. Now, I do know that the uh, compressor is, is not turning on because there's, um, there's, there's no refrigerant in there. So there's a safety mechanism here that if the PSI falls under 26 
PSI, the AC compressor will not turn on. So um, what we're doing is just checking to see where we're at um, uh, pressure wise and we'll, we'll take it from there. So what we do is we need to find the uh, low side on the Chevy Silverado. Um, this right here, this hose is the low side and then this here is the uh, high side port. So all we do is um, we take off the cap. We need to, need to make sure that these up here, that these up here are in the closed position. Okay, that's how you create your vacuum. And then this uh, fill hose here kind of goes back into itself um, so that um, if there's any free on, it doesn't uh, leak into the atmosphere. Okay, so here we go. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, attach this hose here. So again, we uh, make sure that this is closed. Okay, fully retracted. We pull this back, push it in. There we go. So that, oops. So that's in. There's a high side port. Do the same thing. Sure that's secure. That's secure. So now, because that those set of gauges up there are set to close, we're going to open this up now. Open up the little side. So you keep turning. But it's fully open. And showing absolutely nothing. Look at the gauge up there. So I've got zero pressure in there. Well, um, before we put the uh, stop leak and the uh, UV dye, uh, being that there's zero pressure in the entire system, it's a good opportunity to, to um, go ahead and um, create a vacuum just to, um, to clear out the system. If there's any moisture in there. Um, had that just kind of burn off. And um, also, again, to verify that there's a leak. Um, more than likely there's a leak. Um, so uh, what I'm gonna do is um, attach the, uh, the yellow hose here onto the compressor and then begin the process. Okay, so um, just like before, just kind of make sure that um, your connectors are in the uh, appropriate uh, service um, ports and um, it's okay for for them to be open as long as your um, um, these uh, valves here are in the closed position so what i've done is i've taken the uh, yellow hose there and then uh, attach it directly to the pump um once you're all set good to go what you want to do is you want to go ahead and just fire her up turn her on and go ahead and open up uh the valves here to create that vacuum, you'll see it drop with the compressor going. So then open up both of them. The idea behind this is to get it to create a vacuum and if there's any um, condensation or any moisture in there, it'll burn it off. Typically, they, uh, you, they want you to do it for, they suggest about 30 minutes um, and then what you do then is you uh, close the valves, turn off the, uh, the vacuum pump and let it sit for, you know, 30 minutes to an hour um, to verify if there's a leak. Now, um, as you can see here on the low side, it kind of stopped right here. We wanted to get it as close to 30 as possible. So um, sometimes these gauges, um, you know, are 
less than 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 uh, accurate, maybe off, um, you know, just a bit. But um, this kind of will give us a good indicator of, of what's going on with the system. It's the reason why it's important to get you know a set of these gauges here. It has the uh, high side and the low side. It really kind of gives you a really good idea of what your system is doing. All right, so that's where we're at. It's pretty much. Uh, stayed static for the last 30, uh, 30 45 minutes so it hasn't really um, gone up at all so i would safe to say that you know um that it's probably a very very slow leak so um what i'm going to do is that since i have um since i have the uh, vacuum uh this is some other vacuum what i'll go ahead and do is just add the uh, refrigerant just get a can in there then i'll add the uh, stop leak and the uh uv um, leak detector um that seems to be the most feasible way to do it at this point you know uh, i need to get the uh, uh build up some pressure get some freon on there to be able to have the compressor kick on also good to see you know if, if i've got it filled at the correct pressure um you know to see if, if the compressor actually kicks on and starts cooling and if it doesn't then it's the compressor okay so again safety is paramount safety glasses now I've got some nitro gloves, but I'm also going to use um, some regular gloves as well. Now Freon, you know, I mean, if it, if it gets on you directly, you can cause some serious, like freezer burn, like seriously, uh, to the point where, um, you know, you cause some serious damage. And you don't want this stuff in your eyes, you don't want to breathe it. So you take the necessary precautions. So um, a little overboard by having two sets of gloves, but then again, you know, better safe than sorry. So, um, this is under vacuum. These, these are both shut, so I'm just gonna check and make sure. These are both positioned still, and they are. This is under vacuum still, but when I release it, it's a little bit of hissing there. So just to be safe, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it into the valve tap first, get this connected. Uh, you want it um, secure, but not over tighten. Um, th let the uh, O-ring or the gaskets do their job. So hand tighten. You need to make sure that this pin in there is backed out because that's what's going to pierce it. So when I screw it in, you see it, um, you know, moving forward there. So you want to make sure that's completely backed out so you don't get anything leaking out. So just like that. Face the can away from you. So make sure this is back out again, so being safe. You need to puncture it. So what you need to do is you need to screw it in, and then you back it out to release the pressure. So this looks like it's on there pretty good. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and puncture it. You can hear it. Like so. I'm going to back it out. Now, I'm going to go purge it. Set this right here. Okay, rock and roll. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to take this can, and when I, when I open up the low side, I'm going to go from 12 to 3, or 12 or 9 this way. So what you want to do first is you want to shake up the can. And I'm opening this up. So now it's sucking in the refrigerant. You can hear it. All right, so I've got the uh, truck running. Right now, as you can see, it's still equalizing here. So I'm adding a little bit more Freon on there. Pressure is building on the high side. Again, I only want refrigerant to go through on the low side. Now I've got a sight glass right here. And this will fill up the, uh, the 
soy that's filling up the Freon on there. Now normal, no, normal operating pressure should be between 30 and 40, while pressure builds up between 150 and uh, 150 and 350, right in between. So you want it to be between 150 and 250. Looks like this can is empty, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this valve here. Then I'm going to back this out and close it completely. I'm going to purge the line so I don't, I don't have any of the, the free on blowing back at me here. is running just at like 50 60 degrees right below um, so we want it to be right around 40 so I'm going to add just a little bit more so just taking a look really quick at the gauges right now so it's sitting right there at 150 where we need it to be but it's still a little bit on the low side it's still at uh, 20 um, we want it to be between 30 and 40 uh, mercury. So um, we're just going to go ahead and enter another can. Now it was dead empty, so the specifications is 22.40 um, ounces of uh, refrigerant. So um, this can here is uh, at 12.5. So you figure 24.25. So you know maybe do about. Um, maybe three quarters of this, or until it gets up to the uh, the optimal pressure, which is going to be between 30 and 40. Okay, so we're going to hook up the second can. Same process. Make sure that this is backed out. Also, make sure that the low side is, is, is in the closed position, which I already, you know, I already have. But I mean, just just check again. Um, so it's good to be safe. So this is retracted all the way back. You screw the can back on again. The new can, make sure it's facing away from your face. Okay, and then we're gonna puncture it. We're gonna back out just a little bit until we hear a hiss. going to purge once again. You want to shake the can. And open the valve. Okay, so taking a look at the temperature there. So it's, it's sitting, you know, right there, right around, um, right around 41, 42 degrees. You know what? That's acceptable. Um, it, it's all, it all depends on what your ambient temperature is. So um, no complaints there from zero AC to where it's cooling right now. Um, I'd say we're okay um, with that type of reading. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna um, disengage um, the uh, hoses here, these, these uh, the quick connects. What you need to do is you need to um, back out um, the, uh, the pin back here by turning it uh, counterclockwise on either side. And then just releasing it. with that. So we're on the low side, what we're going to do is we're going to add um, the stop leak. This is one of those you just press in. This is a uh, one of those where there's no button to press. What you do is you push it in. Now this here, um, shape well, obviously, and you just need to uh, press it in and count three seconds and that should be enough um, dye to cycle through the system. Um, you don't use the entire can. Um, this is good for a number of uses. So, so we've got that. So I'm just going to do place this in here. And get some uh, some leverage. I can put it in there for three seconds. Two, three. Okay, and that's all I need. What I'm going to do is do the the uh, triple seal the AC stop leak, and this here um, you need to turn this clockwise um, to to puncture the uh, the can. This is only three ounces. I'm going to empty out the entire three ounces um, in here. So, and this is one of those uh, quick connects as well. It only fits on the uh, low side port. So, all right. Well, all that's left now is disconnecting the uh, the manifold gauges up there from the uh, low and high service ports, and the project is pretty much done. So um, next steps would be to drive the car, you know, use the AC and just kind of have it cycle through the next couple of days or so and then um, check for leaks. And um, if I discover a leak, then you know, I'll take necessary steps to get that addressed and uh, repaired. Do another video on the repair. Um, so uh, very surprised. I was sure that there was a leak, but then again, the uh, life expectancy, life expectancy of your uh, your Freon, from what, from what I understand, from what I read, is about 10 years before you have to recharge it. So um, I'm guessing because, you know, I live in Arizona, you know, we have like 100, 1500, 20 degree weather, and then it drops down to like 30 degrees and, and you know, it gets all wonky like that, you know, uh, might, might cause, uh, you know, uh, those conditions might cause uh, an early uh, recharge of the refrigerant in my, you know, in my, in my vehicle. So um, who knows, you know, what do I know, right? So, Anyway, I uh, really appreciate you guys checking out the channel. If you do like the content, please like and subscribe. And um, I'll have a list of all the items that I use in this project in the uh, description below. So um, I've got a review that's coming up on, on a couple of items that, that um, I've been using in the last few months that I think you may be interested in. So stay tuned for that. So um, yeah, until then, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you while I'm working at it. Aloha.